Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and today we're going to be talking about urinary tract infections or UTIs. So if you like finding out new information about health, lifestyle trends or travel, then you need to subscribe below. So what is a UTI? A UTI is a infection or introduction of a bacteria into our bladder and can be categorized in six areas from the uh, initial or a simple or one-off infection down to a relapse or reinfection. So it's categorized as six categories. So if you go to a GP or you're one of those people who get recurrent um, UTIs, you are in a category of six. Aren't you lucky? Mm -mm. So our body has natural defenses to prevent urinary tract infections and these are things like having a healthy urine which has a high acidity which prevents things like pathogens. Uh, the vagina in women is also acidic and prevents bacteria proliferation. And then also our, the actual physical flow of urine uh, out of our bladder into say the toilet or wherever we're peeing um, is also a physical mechanism meant to um, you know, get rid of any microbes sitting around and that's why it's important that we drink plenty of water. And so where does this bacteria come from? So bacteria may migrate from the anus which is our rectum, um, our back passage uh, and usually has gut bacteria such as E. coli. Uh, so it can migrate from our anus, it can migrate, it can come from our vagina and it can come from external sources through things like sexual intercourse. So th these microbes inhabit the distal urethra and ascend toward the bladder. Once they're in the bladder, these microbes have little appendages and adhesins which attach and invade the most superficial cells of the bladder wall. So once they're there, the body has an immune response and cells sends out the neutrophils and they infiltrate the bladder and start cleaning the bacteria away. Now, some of the bacteria evade the neutrophils cleaning action and they proliferate in the bladder wall and they form a biofilm. And here they invade host cells and use them for nutrition and to survive and multiply. So they produce then toxins and proteases that cause damage to urothelial cells. And that is when a urinary tract infection becomes apparent to you because you'll get the burning when you pee uh, stinging when you pee. So when you, I'm using the word pee because it's layman's terms, but there's words like void, micturate. Um, so if you hear those words, um, pass urine, they all mean the same thing, okay? You're peeing. Uh, and so you might notice burning, stinging when you pee, um, and even blood in your urine in some cases. And what happens with this, this infection then go, can go from your bladder and track up into your kidney, okay? And it can then cause damage there and cross the epithelial barrier into your bloodstream call, causing something called urosepsis. And this is not a good condition. Once it goes up into your kidneys, you definitely are needing antibiotics there and you need to go and see a doctor. So if the symptoms of a UTI, what are they? We've already mentioned some. Burning or pain when you urinate, a feeling of pressure or pain in your bladder, uh, a feeling like you have to pee more often than usual, but when you go, there's no urine there, and cloudy or blood-stained urine. So they're indicative of a, a, a UTI. However, if you have pyelonephritis, which is an infection in your kidneys, you may not experience any of those things. So you might instead have things like lower back pain, a high fever, you may feel nauseous or vomit, and you'll feel cold and have the chills and sweats. 
okay? And you need to go and see someone about that because you actually need antibiotics to help clear that up. So who's at risk? Well, unfortunately, women are higher at risk than men. Uh, and this is because of our anatomy. Our urethras, uh, our urethra is only a short distance to our bladder in a female compared with the uh, anatomy of a male, which has a longer urethra until it reaches the bladder. So it's a shorter distance for in women for pathogens to travel to the bladder. Then there's things like sexual activity. So frequent or recent sex, say within the last 24, 48 hours, is a risk factor for having a UTI. And the more partners, the more risk of infection. And sometimes things like spermicide, um, coated diaphragms and condoms can cause a mucosal irritation in the vagina and provide potential attachment sites for uropathogens. Postmenopausal women are more at risk because they have less estrogen in their bodies and estrogen helps the vagina have a nice pH level, which is acidic to bacteria and bacteria don't like it. So it's less of an environment for the bacteria to live. So um, also females who are pregnant have issues trying to empty their bladder completely. This is because they've got a large uterus or womb with a baby in it. And sometimes they cannot empty their bladder properly. And same with um, those who have had recent instrumentation, say cystoscopy or for a male, a, a transurethral resection of a prostate. Um, those who have diabetes or immunosuppressive conditions such as uh, HIV and if you have a strong history in your genetics of UTI. So what are some of the things that we can do that are simple? We can do things like drink more water. So increasing our oral hydration to two to three litres a day. Uh, sexual hygiene, ensuring that, you know, we pee before and after we have sexual intercourse, that, um, you know, we limit our partners because that's a risk factor as well. Being aware that some of the things that we may use as contraception can cause irritation as well. And then definitely um, inclusive, inclusive of that, you know, if your partner is not circumcised, uh, making sure that they are hygienic and actually clean themselves prior sexual intercourse because that is a harbour of bacteria under the foreskin that can infect you. So these are some of the things that you can do um, and definitely things like... Um, wearing cotton underwear, not wearing pantyhose or tights, uh, making sure we empty our bladders properly. Uh, weight loss. If you have a BMI greater than 30, you are at more risk of getting a UTI. This is research-based. This information is taken from journals in the last five years. So it's current information. And avoiding things like bubble baths and talc that could irritate that area as well. So what are the identified treatments uh, that have been you know, effective and what's in these journals and, and the books that I've been researching? Well, the treatment says, number one is cranberry juice, but this is because most people actually think that cranberry juice is helpful with prevention of UTIs. Um, it's not research-based, so, whether it's therapeutic or not, if it's, it, there's no studies to confirm or deny it. Number two treatment is something called D-menos, which is a simple uh, sugar already found in the human body, um, but you can take it in a powder or tablet form and it has been used in UTIs in cats and dogs and been effective. And in the last few years, they have introduced it into humans and found it to be quite effective. So this is found in online um, health food shops or, uh, uh, or you can purchase it online. Um, it's rapidly absorbed in the body within 30 minutes. And what they think happens is um, 
once it hits, once it comes into the bladder, these simple sugars come into the bladder, the, the, the makeup is very, very much like the lining of the bladder. And so the bacteria think, oh, good, and flock to this um, D-menos, these simple sugars, and attach to them. And of course, then they get peed out of the bladder and ta-da, get rid of your infection. So that is how it is thought that that particular um, D-menos works. So uh, the third one is Hyprex. It has been shown as effective in um, preventing recurrent UTIs. And there's what happens is there's two ingredients in that Hyprex. And I'll include these in the description box below if you're thinking, oh, I, I've got to get the name for these. Um, and Hyprex uh, turns, uh, has two active ingredients that make your urine more acidic. So um, it makes it less of a breeding ground for bacteria. Fourth is estrogen replacement. So for those women who lack estrogen or they're postmenopausal or they just may not be have, you know, um, producing enough estrogen, then having something like vaginal estrogen, uh, whether it's a cream or a pessary, uh, which can be inserted, is actually effective in treating um, recurrent UTIs and preventing them because that then increases the pH acidity in your vagina and as we know bacteria don't like that and so they don't proliferate there. The fifth one is Chinese, um, Chinese medicine or traditional Chinese medicine so some of the herbs are thought to be helpful although this is not research based but research studies have shown that acupuncture has been shown as a potential in the prophylaxis of uncomplicated UTIs. Number six is intravesical therapies. This is where a catheter is inserted into the urethra, which then goes into your bladder, and something like a solution of an antibiotic solution is um, syringed or um, irrigated through into your bladder, and then the catheter is removed and three hours later you can then pee like so you hold it as long as you can and that works in your bladder and that has been found as effective and also they can insert um, rather than an antibiotic mix they can also insert something like a hyaluronic acid <laughs> um, mix no it's not for your face but it does the same thing it coats the bladder um, mucous membrane and therefore prevents the bacteria from attaching themselves to the wall of your bladder. And so number seven is immunomodulation vaccines where it, this induces the host to set off an immune response and these are the same things in vaccines so they can be oral, they can be sublingual and they can also be injectable as well. So I hope that this information has been helpful, particularly if you have UTIs that are recurrent and keep coming back. Um, they can really affect your life and, um, and your quality of life. So if any of these have been helpful, please check out the description box below, subscribe to my channel and definitely go see your GP and say, hey, I saw this on a YouTube clip. What do you think? Okay, and yeah, just ask for advice from your GP uh, and see what they recommend. You know, some of these things that you can just buy over the counter as well. So you might be able to try them out. But definitely, if you have any type of infection or you think you've got a UTI, go and speak to your GP. Okay, so that's it for me. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.